right, so good morning again. Uh, this is now our lightning talk on entitled, what does this refer to using refer links and online chat service data? So our presenters for our lightning talk today are myself. My name is Kim Luby. Um, I also have with me Bridget Sanders and John B. Moore. We are all librarians at the University of North Carolina Charlotte at the J. Murray Atkins Library. So a short summary of our project that we wanted to tell you about is we use our patrons chat questions to provide content for updating our web pages. And then we base this on the web page that our patrons started a chat from. So we're going to detail that and show you how we did it, what our steps were, what it looked like, and what ended up happening with it. So what did this process look like? So the chat service we were using at the time, we were using library help. We used chats from the years 2017 to 2020. So this was all pre-pandemic. The number of chats we looked at were 8,000 total. And we coded them using natural language codes, which I'll show on this next slide. And obviously, it would take a very long time to do 8,000 chats by hand. So we used the spreadsheet function Regimax um, for the first 7,000 chats. We're able to get those with the natural language codes. And then just we're left over with 1,000 chats that we coded by hand. And then finally, we took all those codes and matched them to different library departments to help break them up and organize the chat questions. So examples of our codes, we tried to get most of the questions, or excuse me, um, most of our questions ended up matching with our access services, which is circulation, and our research and instructional services, RIS. So here are some of the codes that we used. Remember I said that we used natural language codes and found that students pretty much ask questions the same way over and over and over. They use the same words. So the most popular ones were words like research, citations, database, endnote, research project, journal, newspaper, literature review. And we ended up taking out some codes that were as helpful that I thought might be helpful, looking for something that said like, help, like I need help finding, or I'm looking for, I'm searching, searching for, help me find. Those weren't as useful rather than um, as compared to just the actual, like the nouns, like I said, like research citation database. Those showed up over and over and over. And I'm gonna send it on to Bridget and she's gonna tell you more about the pages that they came from. Thanks, Kim. Um, for our analysis, we used what is known in the chat system as a referrer page. This uh, page shows where the patron was when they first initiated or needed assistance, and is usually where they clicked on um, the, hat, uh, the chat button for additional help. In the administrative part of the system, a link to the page is provided so we use that data from the referrer page to evaluate the information on the page to determine whether the, pa the patron was on the correct page or not. The information that the patron was seeking was not on that page or the information wasn't clear enough to answer the patron's question. This is an example of what the referrer page looks like. It includes the referrer link, um, that I mentioned the date and time and the text of the chat along with um, the patron's question. We assigned uh, broad categories or subjects to the uh, chat questions and then broke them down by specific library department. We summarized the patron's questions and made a list of recommendations. We then created a report along with our recommendations that we shared with our website content editors and, the, and our website advisory group, which is a group that evaluates the content of our web pages and then makes recommendations for changes. This committee consists of various library departmental representatives, the chair of the committee, and also the webmaster. And now I'll turn it over to John if he's here. I'm here. Thanks, Bridget. Um, all right. So uh, we were preparing to essentially do this analysis again and make some more recommendations. So looking back, we wanted to track what happened to the original recommendations that we made two years ago in 2020. Um, so this chart essentially shows the path that those recommendations took. Um, 
you could see that about half of the recommendations were done immediately or at least very quickly. Um, so we made 39, um, as of right now, uh, 22 have been completed. Um, and you can see that some of the recommendations were, as it says, superseded by a site update. Uh, that means that an update was made to the site before the recommendation could be implemented that then kind of made that recommendation uh, unnecessary because the purpose of the page changed or, or it was removed or something like that. Um, a fairly large chunk of the recommendations that we made were then incorporated into some other web project. Um, and you can see if you compare uh, the original recommendations to those that were incorporated into another project. Um, very few of the ones that ended up uh, incorporated were then implemented. Most of them got superseded. Uh, some of them ended up incomplete. And then um, only two of them were rejected after review by um, whatever the uh, other projects group uh, review uh, determined. So ultimately now just under one in five are incomplete. Obviously we would like to see all of them complete. Um, whereas just over half um, after two years were completed. Uh, so just some takeaways from this project. Um, given the, well, I think the important thing is that um, this provides a practical application for some of the chat data that you may already have. Um, it gives you a, a form of analysis and a, a method of making recommendations that you can apply really at any time to your website, as long as your chat service is able to give you the information on refer uh, pages. Um, the fact that so many of the recommendations, or at least more of them than we would have liked, were incomplete after two years, I think speaks to the fact that um, website updates happen very frequently, very often, um, and many of our recommendations ended up not being complete. Um, so it's very important, I think, if you're going to do a chat analysis like this to prioritize speed, um, and that's going to be something that we do uh, as we do this project again. Um, and to help you prioritize speed, I think um, you could use a smaller sample size of chats. So as Kim says, we analyzed a lot of chats for this, um, but most of the patterns that we noticed were evident even in a smaller sample size of the chats. I don't think you need to do everything. Um, and that allows you to be a little bit more agile if you're doing a project like this. Um, it also helps to have somebody in a if your uh, organization has a web advisor group like we do, or if you just have somebody who manages the website to have a connection with that committee or with that person um, as part of your analysis group uh, to kind of facilitate the path of recommendations to getting implemented quicker. Um, and then looking back as we did this analysis, uh, it would have been smart for us to make it a little bit easier to track um, when or if the changes that we made or uh, the, the recommendations that we uh, made were implemented. Um, so that is something we plan to do as we come around to a second round for this analysis. Bridget or Kim, you can go on. So now we can open it up for any questions. I saw some of them were already coming in the chat. Yeah, we probably have more questions than we have time to answer, um, but which backend system did you get the refer pages from? The library help system. Library help. Yeah, it was the administrative function where you see everything. And can you give an example of maybe what one of the recommendations was? Like, was it content related or structural? What kinds of things were you seeing or were based on the, your analysis? I can answer this one. So I backed it up to um, one of our slides. That, so this is an example here in the middle of from our report where our topic was library classrooms. And then this was the refer page, meaning this was the website page that the um, person began their chat from. And topics about library classrooms were um, someone wants to use classrooms as a meeting space for a project discussion. Um, There's confusion over a student 
wanting to know if they could book a classroom for a speaking event. Um, and then someone was saying that they did not receive a confirmation after requesting to use one of our classrooms. So we made the recommendations to create a confirmation email for room requests and to also clarify who can use the rooms and for what purpose. So that is one of the examples. I don't think yes. we're going to have time to answer the last question from Liza, but Liza, I encourage you, please email us because we've got some information to share about that as well. Great. Thank you all so much. I mean, please do follow up. Um, all of our presenter information should be on SCED, and um, I'm sure they're happy to hear from you. But we'll go ahead and close this session. So we have about 10 minutes to get to our keynote. Um, but thank you all so much, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Amelia.